Hello from Who Died Today America, and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days, we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Kate Coughling, a beloved member of the University of Kentucky dance team and an inspiring nursing student, passed away at the tender age of 20 after a valiant battle with osteosarcoma. Joining the dance team alongside her twin sister Abby, Kate quickly became a beacon of joy and resilience, deeply affecting everyone she encountered with her radiant spirit and determination. Head coach Dawn Walters remembered Kate as a joy to coach and a source of light for the team, highlighting her courageous fight against cancer as a source of inspiration for all. Her struggle was marked by bravery and an unwavering spirit, leaving an indelible mark on her coaches, teammates, and the broader university community. Despite her illness, Kate's commitment to her studies never waned, exemplifying an extraordinary dedication to her academic pursuits. She was recognized not only for her talents as a dancer, but also for her academic excellence, even as she underwent rigorous cancer treatments. Kate's journey was a testament to her strength and perseverance, from celebrating the end of her chemotherapy treatments to envisioning a brighter future beyond her illness. Her optimistic outlook and heartfelt advice to cherish loved ones and appreciate life's blessings reflected a maturity and wisdom far beyond her years. Kate's legacy is a powerful reminder of the impact one individual can have on a community, inspiring those around her to face challenges with grace and courage. Her life, though tragically short, was marked by remarkable achievements and an enduring spirit of hope. She leaves behind a loving family, including her parents, Holly and Steve Kaufling, and her sister, Abby, who, along with her extended university family, will forever cherish her memory. Barbara Baldwin, a versatile actress best known for her performances on Star Trek and Medical Center, and later a notable contributor to television casting, passed away at the age of 85 from congestive heart failure at her Manhattan Beach home. Her career spanned decades, demonstrating her versatility and talent in acting and casting. Born on October 18, 1938, in Quincy, Massachusetts, she developed her passion for acting while attending El Camino College in Torrance, California, and later honed her skills at the Lee Strasberg Institute. Her significant television performances include playing Angela Martine, a phaser control officer on Star Trek. She made a lasting impression in two episodes of the show's first season in 1966, playing a Starfleet officer whose wedding is ruined by an interplanetary conflict. She reappeared for the series finale as Lieutenant Lisa, demonstrating her flexibility in the renowned sci-fi series. She also had a recurring role as Nurse Holmby on Medical Center, appearing in 51 episodes and contributing considerably to the medical drama's success over its final six seasons from 1970 to 1976. She found a new calling in the casting department, where she left her stamp on various 1980s television episodes such as Hagen, Square Pegs, Matt Houston, Dynasty, Finder of Lost Loves, and Trapper John, Maryland. Her ability to recognize and choose talent was critical to the success of these shows, showcasing her keen sense of potential and commitment to the television industry. Aside from her professional accomplishments, she was noted for her friendship with Don Wells, a close friend and Gilligan's Island actor with whom she shared a birth date. Barbara Baldwin's legacy in acting and casting lives on in the television landscape, as colleagues, friends, and fans remember her. She is survived by her sons Mark and Joseph D'Agosta, as well as grandchildren Cassandra and Justine, capping off a spectacular journey through Hollywood's golden years. Betty Brodell, a beloved character from Hollywood's golden age and the elder sister of Joan Leslie, a famous actress remembered for her parts in High Sierra and Sergeant York, passed away at the age of 104 in Florida. Brodell was born on February 5, 1920, in Detroit, Michigan to a close-knit family that included her sister Joan and Mary, 
with whom she formed the Brodell Sisters Vaudeville Act. This group charmed audiences from their hometown to New York City, traveling extensively throughout North America. Her career in the entertainment industry was highlighted by her appearances in famous wartime charity films, such as Thank Your Lucky Stars and Hollywood Canteen, as well as Yankee Doodle Dandy, Too Young to Know, and Cinderella Jones. Her works with Sister Joan Leslie in these films highlighted their close professional and personal relationship. She, the daughter of a bank teller and a homemaker, began her entertainment career with her sisters at a young age. Their early exposure to the spotlight through vaudeville and film paved the way for their future contributions to the film business. Her flexibility as an actress was demonstrated by her parts in a range of genres, including musicals and comedies, which attracted her to fans and cemented her place in Hollywood's illustrious history. Beyond the screen, she lived a life of personal pleasure and long-term relationships. Her marriage to Joe Franzalia in 1948 lasted until his death in 1999, demonstrating her commitment to family and loved ones. She lived in Fort Walton Beach, Florida since 1963 and spent her last years away from the Hollywood spotlight, surrounded by her children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, all of whom survived her and continue to treasure her memory. Her passing signals the end of an era, as she was the last surviving member of the Brodel sisters, leaving a rich legacy that influenced both the entertainment industry and the lives of those closest to her. Her contributions to the arts, like those of her sisters, are an important part of Hollywood history, remembered for delivering joy and entertainment to audiences at a turbulent period in world history. Mark Spiro, an influential American songwriter, record producer, and recording artist, passed away at the age of 67 due to lung cancer. Born on March 28, 1957, in Seattle, his career in the music industry took him from his hometown to the thriving music scene of Los Angeles in his early 20s. His career took a big turn in Germany, where he cooperated with well-known musicians and producers, including Laura Branigan, Anne Murray, and David Hasselhoff. When he returned to Los Angeles in the mid-1980s, his songwriting abilities blossomed, and he scored his first significant hit on the Top Gun soundtrack. This victory heralded the start of a successful career that saw him write songs and produce albums for a wide range of performers, including Steve Perry, Rick Springfield, and Cheap Trick. His work not only crossed genres, but also improved the soundtracks of films and television shows, adding to the cultural zeitgeist of the day. Spiro released Traveling Cowboys in 2021, which featured collaborations with Julian Lennon and Tim Pierce, demonstrating his ability to grow and stay relevant in the music industry. His repertoire, which includes albums like as Care of My Soul and It's a Beautiful Life, as well as his contributions to television and film, provide a picture of a diverse and passionate artist whose influence on music will be remembered by both peers and fans. His producing credits demonstrate a dedication to cultivating talent, as evidenced by his collaborations with Lila McCann and Ruby Summer, among others. His death is a tremendous loss for the music industry, but his legacy lives on via the songs and albums that have grabbed the hearts of many. While we grieve his passing, we also recognize the profound impression he made on the business, molding the soundtrack of our lives with memorable melodies and compassionate lyrics. Jennifer Leake, an actress renowned for her roles in the classic film Yours, Mine, and Ours, and on prominent soap operas such as The Guiding Light, The Young and the Restless, and Another World, passed away at the age of 76 after a battle with progressive supranuclear palsy, a rare neurological disease that marked her final years. She was born in Cardiff, Wales in 1947 and began acting in the mid-1960s, most notably in Yours, Mine, and Ours, a film about a blended family of 18 children starring Henry Fonda and Lucille Ball, opposite Tim Matheson. This play not only elevated her career, but also introduced her to Matheson, whom she subsequently married. Her contribution to the world of soap operas was considerable, with memorable roles that made her a household name on American television. She played Gwen Sherman on The Young and the Restless, Olive Springer Gordon Randolph on Another World, and Blanche Bouvier on Guiding Light, demonstrating her versatility and aptitude in a range of roles and plot lines. Despite her success on screen, she had hurdles in her career, 
such as having to withdraw from a position in Mike Nichols' The Graduate owing to visa issues. Nonetheless, her performances left an indelible mark on viewers and the entertainment business. By the mid-1980s, she had mainly abandoned acting and pursued a career as a real estate sales agent. Her personal life included marriages to Tim Matheson from 1968 to 1971, and then to James Daria in 1977, with whom she had a 47-year marriage until her death. Her legacy in film and television, her contributions to legendary soap operas, and her outstanding performance in Yours, Mine, and Ours will be treasured and remembered as important aspects of her exceptional life and career. She is survived by her husband, James Doria, and her brother, leaving a legacy of performances that continue to captivate audiences. Joe Flaherty, a celebrated actor and comedian renowned for his memorable performances on the sketch comedy series SCTV and the beloved teen comedy drama Freaks and Geeks, passed away at the age of 82 following a brief illness. His daughter Gudrun announced his passing, remembering him for his profound love of classic films from the 1940s and 1950s, a passion that had a significant impact on his illustrious career spanning nearly five decades. Born in Pittsburgh, his comedic adventure began with his participation in Chicago's famed improv company, The Second City, which laid the framework for a career that would see him leave an unmistakable impact on television comedies such as Frasier and Family Guy. Gudrun's message emphasized her father's appreciation for his time on SCTV, underlining his pride in the show's success and the exceptional cast with whom he had the opportunity of working. Martin Short, a former SCTV cast member, paid tribute to Flaherty, calling him the wisest and most entertaining figure in comedy, improvisation, and character development. Short often referred to him as the anchor of SCTV, a testament to his vital role and widespread admiration among his peers. His portrayal as Harold Weir on Freaks and Geeks struck a chord with viewers, solidifying the show's legacy as a cult classic and a springboard for future stars. His career also had a noteworthy appearance in Happy Gilmore as the legendary heckler, demonstrating his range and comedic genius. Beloved in both the United States and Canada, his talents went beyond SCTV, with substantial involvement in the Canadian comedy industry, including Toronto's Second City and guest appearances on series like Royal Canadian Air Farce. Co-stars and admirers, including Adam Sandler and Jennifer Tilly, paid tribute to Flaherty's generosity, talent and comedic brilliance, highlighting his long-lasting influence on comedy and the entertainment industry. Joe Flaherty leaves a legacy of fun and greatness. He is survived by his two children, Gudrun and Gabriel, and is lovingly remembered by fans and colleagues alike for his contributions to the art of comedy. Louis Gossett Jr., a renowned American actor whose performance as gunnery sergeant Emil Foley in the 1982 film An Officer and a Gentleman secured his place in Hollywood history, passed away at the age of 87. His passing, caused by a brief illness, ends a successful career that spanned five decades and broke down racial barriers in the entertainment world. He was the first black actor to receive an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor, succeeding Hattie McDaniel and Sidney Poitier. Born on May 27, 1936, in Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn, his rise to popularity began on Broadway, where at the age of 17, he made his debut in Take a Giant Step, winning critical praise and the Donaldson Award for Best Newcomer. His aptitude and tenacity prompted him to study drama at New York University, but he continued to work in theater, appearing in shows such as A Raisin in the Sun with Sidney Poitier and Ruby Dee, and The Blacks with James Earl Jones and Cicely Tyson, among others. His versatility extended beyond acting to music, where he wrote the anti-war hit Handsome Johnny with Richie Havens and participated in the Greenwich Village folk music scene. However, his performance as the slave fiddler in the pioneering miniseries Roots demonstrated his ability to bring complicated characters to life, winning him great attention and an Emmy Prize. Despite the typecasting issues that followed his Oscar triumph for An Officer and a Gentleman, he proceeded to provide strong performances in a variety of parts, including the TV series Gideon Oliver and the miniseries Sadat. His performance in The Josephine Baker Story further displayed his versatility, earning him a Golden Globe. 
His passing is a great loss to the entertainment industry and to everyone who was inspired by his drive to breaking down racial boundaries and his steadfast commitment to his trade. He is survived by his sons, Sadie and Sharon, and he leaves a legacy that will continue to motivate future generations. Breaking news of the day. News 1. Christina Applegate shared a candid insight into her battle with multiple sclerosis during a recent episode of The Messy Podcast, co-hosted with Jamie Lynn Sigler. The 52-year-old actress recounted an intense relapse phase, characterized by debilitating leg pain and difficulty with basic movements, highlighting the unpredictable nature of MS. Despite the challenges, Applegate remains determined, leveraging her sense of humor as a coping mechanism. Her story, reflecting both vulnerability and resilience, continues to inspire many as she navigates life with MS alongside her daughter Sadie. Applegate's openness about her journey sheds light on the realities of living with a chronic illness and the importance of support and understanding. News 2. Michael J. Fox, renowned for his indomitable spirit in the face of Parkinson's disease for over three decades, remains hopeful for the future. Speaking at a Nashville event for the Michael J. Fox Foundation, the 62-year-old actor reflected on a year marked by physical hurdles yet filled with significant milestones, including his daughter's upcoming wedding. Despite acknowledging the year's difficulties, Fox emphasized the joy and progress unfolding in his life. Supported by his wife Tracy Pollan and their four children, Fox continues to embrace new experiences and challenges, pushing forward the mission of his foundation. As the couple celebrated 35 years of marriage, Fox highlighted the importance of partnership and understanding in navigating life's journey together.